So with me here, I have two amazing people. Let me start with uh, Masin Zissa, who's a development scientist, and uh, Yali R RLC yes. alumni. And uh, we have George Oteno just next to her, who's a civil engineer, social entrepreneur, and Mandela Washington fellow. Most welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, let me allow you, let me start with you, Masi, sure. to mention, you know, anything that I've not said. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much for having us on set. Uh, mm -hmm. As mentioned, my name is uh, Masi Mutuku. Um, I'm a Yali alumni, cohort 35 under the civic engagement track. Uh, professionally, I am a program manager at Girls for Girls Kenya. Um, and I also serve as a national accountability advisor for resilient livelihood projects uh, with VSO, where I offer technical assistance and uh, mentorship. So that's me in a, in a nutshell. nutshell, yeah. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Uh, what about what about you, John? Yes, so I'm uh, John Jairo, also a Yali RLC, alumni from cohort 31, and a Mandela Washington Fellow of uh, the year 2022. Mm -hmm. I practice as a civil engineer, currently mm -hmm. the chairman of uh, engineers under the age of 40, mm -hmm. also known as uh, Future Leaders at the Association of Consulting Engineers of Kenya. And I'm also uh, a founder and a director of an organization called OLAN. So at OLAN, we build the capacity of young people who are out of school in mm -hmm. leadership and entrepreneurship. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm. So you both have amazing um, initiatives that you've, you've started. And uh, maybe you can speak more into that. Mm -hmm. And what inspired you to do what you're doing? Uh, you've mentioned Girls for Girls. You've mentioned OLAN. So let's start with Marcy. What, what exactly do you do and uh, what inspired you to do that? Um, so my background is in community development. Uh, so uh, at Girls for Girls, I work as a program manager. I have a passion for impact. Um, and so Girls for Girls just uh, fit right into my goals and aspirations. So um, as a program manager, I get to uh, manage our leadership development cohorts. So this targets young girls and women from the ages of uh, 15. Um, and now we are realizing it was 15 to 60. Now we are realizing 60 plus women also want to be mentored, want to be in spaces where they are inspired and empowered. And they, um, and then that space where we have a creed, uh, a sister skipper creed, where we say we are our sister skipper. So then that's what we encourage and inspire. Um, and the beauty about it is um, mm -hmm. the testimonials that we get mm -hmm. um, and how mm -hmm. uh, it's older women mm -hmm. say they wish they had uh, come to know about Girls for Girls earlier and the mentorship program, having another woman hold your hand professionally and also personally, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, I get to oversee our leadership development cohorts. Um, I also get to uh, develop proposals for potential clients and funders, uh, oversee our staff uh, and volunteers, you know, back uh, admin, yeah, you know. End, yeah. Yes, um, and it's a very, very exciting uh, journey. It has been for me. and. I would say that it actually began um, with Yali, because I remember I was introduced to Girls for Girls by one um, of our, a very phenomenal woman. Uh, mm. We used to call her the Ugandan Kenyan. Okay. Um, so Girls for Girls is a, a global program. So she's uh, a, a, a very big um, a board member with Uganda, and she was like, um, you should try out for Kenya. And I got into that space and got inspired, and later on, got to join as part of the overseeing team. Okay. So yes, uh, we reach out to young girls and women um, and we uh, provide mentorship um, and leadership development. All right, yeah. wonderful. I think that's quite uh, an amazing thing to do, you yeah. know, empowering the young girls. And you've said even the older ones. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Wonderful. What about you, John? Um, at Olan, what's, what exactly do you do? Uh, Yes, also my journey at Holland began at the early RLC, yeah, uh, where I was trained on civic leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming from my community as uh, John Jairo and uh, being trained at the RLC, mm -hmm. then now my role then would be to also 
empower other young people in my community. And so we know that one of the challenges we face, uh, so, uh, one of the challenges that young people face in the countries is unemployment. So then my question was then how can I address this issue with the knowledge that I have? Mm -hmm. And so then Olan came to mind in, uh, in terms of how can I also build the capacity of, uh, of other young people in leadership and entrepreneurship so that we can use the resources we have at our disposal in our communities to make, to make an income and as well transform other people around us. And that is what we have been doing. We are lucky that uh, through also the early RLC, as alumni, we've uh, got uh, transformation funds, which even now we are currently uh, training about 70 young people in Syria in leadership and entrepreneurship. Mm. And uh, it, it's quite interesting because uh, uh, one of the outcomes of uh, such like training is that you meet young people who are so passionate about what they're doing, mm -hmm. who are using some of the resources. For instance, I come uh, from uh, around the lake. There's some waste that come from the lake which uh, the young people are using to make chicken feed. They're using the reeds to weave baskets. And within those communities, you find now they're making their own income. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is reducing unemployment uh, one person at a time. Okay. So that is what uh, most inspires me at Olan when I see uh, young people making an income for themselves and as well making opportunities for their fellow youth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And um, both of you have said that all this, what you're doing, has stemmed from the program YALI. Uh, you're inspired by, by the leadership program there. So how important um, is it to have more of YALI? Yes you know, kind of training uh -huh. among the young people, among Kenyans, especially now that uh, we know the majority of the population of Kenyans is young people. And what what is in the training, you know, that brings the leader out of individuals, you know, like what happened to you? How did it change you? Or how did it help you discover the leader in you? Let me start with Marcy and then go to you, John. Awesome. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I think the, the first thing that comes to mind when you uh, mention, when I think of my early experience is um, the diverse set of people that I got to meet. So Yali is uh, beautiful uh, in the sense that we have uh, different regional leadership centers. So we were the, in the East African um, Regional Leadership Center, right? Mm -hmm. So then imagine all the youth from this particular region coming together. Um, yes, we are. Uh, so Yali has uh, three tracks. We have the civic track, we have uh, the uh, business track, business uh, and entrepreneurship yeah, track, entrepreneurship and, uh, and uh, the public, public management. management track, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and it's very beautiful just to engage with uh, change makers and leaders from different countries and just get their insights. You get to realize that we really have the same problems. But it's, it's the beauty of the innovativeness that you get to experience in that room. Um, and for me, that was really big uh, because, um, so one of the courses that we have is um, on the seven ha habits of leadership mm -hmm. uh, by uh, Covey. Um, and one of the things that uh, we got to talk about was uh, sharpening the saw. And that's one of the things that you get to experience in the four week program. Uh, not only exchanging innovative ideas, learning experiences from other people, but then just seeing the simplicity of life. Of, and we can take that from uh, Gyro's initiative, looking around what you have around you and how best you can make use of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, uh, um, I would really say that Yali is a space that every young person should as aspire to enter and be part of because um, there's a paradigm shift that mm -hmm. comes from being with that in that space. There's a broadening of networks, you know, um, and across partnerships, you get mm -hmm. to realize, again, for example, Girls for Girls is not only a Kenyan initiative, it's in 27 countries in Africa already. So then mm -hmm. how do we make use of that network and uh, make it bigger and reach out to more women um, and create more impact? Um, and I, I really love the Kenyan youth 
because we are forward thinking. And I believe Yali will be the space where we get to amplify that. Uh, we have a mantra that we say, uh, this is Africa and Africa is our business. Mm -hmm. So then how do we make Africa great with who we are and what we have? So yes, I would say it's a master 10 <laughs> for every youth. Um, I think below 35. Yes, 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 yes below 35, 35. Yes. Right. Yeah. I think I think our audience fits that <laughs> <laughs> fits that age group, yeah. you know, yeah. because I'm sure many people watching are below 35, and we'll get you. You will give us later on after right after Ger uh, Gerald tells us his own story. Yeah, um, maybe how people can tap into it, how people enjoy. Um, be part of VLE. Sure. So, um, Jairo, tell us your own experience. What did it do to you? How did it bring out the leader in you? Yes, uh, you know, there's a say that goes that uh, if if you hang around uh, four great people, then uh, you're the fifth great person. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the components that YALI does is that it brings uh, top leaders from 14 Eastern, Africa, East, Eastern African uh, countries. Mm -hmm. So now you can imagine you're in a room with about 100 people drawn from uh, 14 countries within uh, Eastern Africa. Mm -hmm. Everyone doing great things. Uh, you look at uh, a transformation somebody does, for instance, in a cen a Central African Re Republic, then it hits your mind that, oh, we are facing the same challenge in mm -hmm. Kenya. Then how can I learn from the solution you are offering to address the same problem in Kenya? Mm -hmm. Then. A light bulb uh, uh, lights up in your mind, and I believe it does in so many people's minds that uh, we can always learn from each other, from the great things that other young leaders are doing uh, across different countries or even in, in Kenya, and uh, apply, learn from the solutions, uh, uh, learn from how they're solving the problems, and apply the same solutions to some of the challenges we're facing in our communities. So that is what I loved uh, so much about Yali. Wow, incredible. Yes. So you're saying that uh, we need to be in spaces that will um, that are empowering to us to yeah. have company that is worthwhile, you know, yeah. <laughs> because sometimes we lose it because of the people that are around us, right? For sure. So for Olan, um, yeah. still on Olan, um, Marcy had mentioned, you know, the, the, the importance of networking or the value it brings on matters networking. Is it also happening in your own capacity at, at Olan? Yes, it's also happening at Olan. For instance, uh, the project we are currently running called the CIU Youth Empowerment Project, mm -hmm. we also draw youth from different uh, wards within uh, CIA County and we bring them together as we take them through better ways of doing their businesses, better ways of uh, leading their businesses. Mm. And the concept of networking comes out clearly because you realize somebody is doing a similar project in another world and uh, somebody is also doing a similar project but facing challenges. So by bringing these people together, they get to collaborate and uh, uh, develop, uh, co-create some of the solutions together. And mm -hmm. I believe that is what we want, where youth can collaborate yeah. uh, so that uh, we don't have everyone doing the same thing. If you are doing poultry and another person is, is doing poultry, mm -hmm. you can get into manufacturing the poultry feed if that is the challenge that other person is facing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is one of the ways that we can grow uh, together as youth. Wow, yes. incredible. Yeah. Um, you also attended, the, you are a fellow of uh, the Mandela uh, Washington. Yeah. So tell us about it. Well, uh, the Mandela Washington Fellowship is uh, one of the most uh, pre uh, prestigious leadership uh, development programs we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is still a component of YALI. Uh, YALI has got three components, the first being the YALI network, which is online and it's free for all. Mm -hmm. Then we have the YALI RLC, uh, which is uh, uh, which only has got uh, four centers within Africa, the one in Kenya. Mm -hmm. South Africa, Ghana, and Senegal. Then finally, we have the Mandela Washington Fellowship. So the Mandela Washington Fellowship uh, uh, develops the capacity of uh, now top leaders all over Africa. So every year, about 700 leaders go to the United States to be capacity built still in the areas of uh, business and entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. civic leadership, and uh, public management. My, 
my participation was in a leadership in business mm -hmm. where I was attached to the University of Nevada in Reno. And uh, one of the interesting things with the Mandela Washington Fellowship is that, uh, well, you are viewed as one of the top leaders in Africa. So there's so much responsibility that you carry and that means you are also exposed to the best. For instance, in our time, we, we went to, to Tesla uh, Gigafactory in Nevada, where all mm. the batteries uh, that are used in Tesla cars are manufactured. Mm. And what that means to me as an, engineer, uh, as an engineer, when I see those things being done hands-on, then I ask myself in my country, uh, and also as, as a contractor, why do, do I have to import nails when we can do such basic things in our country? Mm -hmm. Those people are doing much. We can start with the little things as we dream of uh, even manufacturing our own batteries or our own uh, vehicles. Mm -hmm. So it is quite uh, in, inspirational and uh, we learn a lot uh, from the fellowship. Wow, yes. okay, incredible. Yeah. I, I'm getting that, um, you know, being part of this fellowship, of such fellowships, does something to your mind, you get a mind shift, you know. True. Why, why is it important for people to, to yearn for it or to want to want such type uh, kind of leadership programs, Mercy? Um, I think for me, I'd say if you desire change, then you should be in it. Um, so just to add on something uh, before I delve into that, mm -hmm. um, probably someone might be saying, well, I, I really don't deserve or I don't mm -hmm. think I qualify to be part of Yali because I'm not doing great yeah, and enormous things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that can come to mind. Um, and one of the things I appreciate about Yali, well, that's not the case. I'll start with that. Mm, okay. uh, we do have something that's called the design uh, thinking. Uh, it's a course, and then we have a challenge afterwards. Mm -hmm. So then um, we are taken through the design thinking process. And afterwards, then we are uh, to come up with a project that we get to implement within okay. that period. Um, and the thing that you get to appreciate uh, from that course and the challenge is we are all very creative. We are all very innovative. It just comes in different ways, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so I, I felt it very important to also mention that nobody needs to feel locked out because you hear great leaders and you think it has to be, you know, you, know, you have to have a hundred accolades, you know, <laughs> yes. not really. Um, it matters what you do in your different spaces. The, 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 the change, the impact that you inspire from the family level, from the community level. I mean, you could have your own uh, organization or you could be supporting an organization. Mm -hmm. You could, um, and it's really beautiful, uh, the power of the internet, where we get to see um, children, even in informal settlements, come up with, you know, uh, really cool innovations. And you're like, you don't need to have gone to a particular school or done a particular you know, course for you to fail. Now I qualify to apply for such. Mm -hmm. um, it's very open to all. So for me, back to your question will be um, why. That was the question, yeah. right? I think for me, it's if you have a strong why, then YAL is for you. Like, uh, if you have a strong, how can I inspire change? in my community, um, in my area, or in my sphere of influence, uh, that's enough. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. So for us, that's what we wow. call the sphere of influence, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to come and say, I want to be the president of Kenya. <laughs> that's how, you know? <laughs> that's how I'll change know? the world, yeah. yeah. It starts with where I am, with what I have, what problem am I seeing? And not the design thinking challenge and the sessions help you to to look at things in a very simple way and be like, oh, you see, like hyacinth, what can I make with that? Mm -hmm. And how can I make money from that? Mm -hmm. So it's that just, it opens your mind, it shifts your thinking. And one of the things that's big is you get to shift from a scarcity mindset. And you find that's what most people have grown up with. So it's away from there's not enough to there's so much, how do I make use of what I, I, can, I, can, I can actually see? Okay. So for me to be, um, if you desire change in whatever capacity, in whatever space you are in, then this is for you. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Um, is everyone uh, a leader? Uh, <laughs> because someone would say, uh, I don't think, uh, 
you know, I don't think I'm a leader. Let me, you know, I, I, I'm better being led. I'm better being delegated duties. You know, someone thinks a leader is just someone who gives the orders, you know, right. gives the directions and everything. So is everyone a leader or can everyone be a leader? I, I really like that question. And it's one of the sessions we also had in Yali. <laughs> are um, leaders born or are leaders made? Mm -hmm. So then you get to realize that we all have uh, innate abilities in us. Um, and then that calls us to really question and um, what leadership and define redefine what leadership means and what leadership looks to us because then it could be as simple as uh, you're the first one in a family whether you like it or not you are a leader <laughs> because then you know people are looking <laughs> yeah you know, and you have you. a set of responsibilities and all that so i will not say i'm a leader because i'm a program manager it's uh how am i able to inspire people to achieve what they've always desired right so if i'm able to offer that space for creativity and inspiration and learning then i believe which now creates translates to change and impact i believe then that uh shows or uh shows basically that yeah you are a leader i believe that leaders are made okay yes leaders are made Re Wonderful. leaders are made yeah. okay going back to you john maybe you can also just chime in the same question um you know, are leaders made, are leaders born, and the importance of mentorship, if there is, in uh, entrepreneurship? Oh, yes. Uh, I also believe that uh, everyone is born a leader, uh, basically everyone. Huh? Now, when I take you back, uh, when I use, for instance, the Bible as a reference, mm -hmm. that all human beings were created to have uh, dominion over the earth. And uh, that means already there's a sense of responsibility that is bestowed upon each and every human being from, uh, from their point of birth. And uh, there are also two things here. There's, uh, I can categorize it as a leadership spirit. Everyone is born with a leadership spirit. But then it takes mentorship to develop the spirit of leadership. Mm -hmm. So now through getting uh, immersed in such programs as YALI or through interacting with other change makers, then that spirit of leadership gets alive uh, within you each and every day. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that uh, as young people, we spend so much of our time with the people who are better than us. And that is already mentorship, so that uh, we can learn from them, so that uh, we can also uh, build some of the ideas we've had since, uh, since childhood. I believe uh, most of uh, most of human beings, uh, there's always that idea that you've, you've always uh, thought about when you're young. Mm -hmm. But sometimes within, as you grow up, interacting with so many challenges in life mm -hmm. and uh, just so many other things, that thing fades. Huh? And uh, that is, I can call that uh, we get to lose our we get to lose our leadership spirit huh? mm -hmm. when we let s so many distractions. Huh? Uh, that kill our dreams. So it is important that uh, we get immersed in such programs. We relate well with uh, our, our mentors so that we can always keep on cultivating that uh, mm. leadership spirit uh, with, uh, uh, within us. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I love what you've said. Um, mm. Everyone is born a, born a leader, but it takes mentorship to develop the leadership yes, uh, spirit. Yes, exactly. I yeah. love it. Um, just before I go to uh, Mercy, and I'll just ask you the same question. What are some of the lessons, key lessons or key takeaways from your own journey, your own experience as um, a fellow of these programs and as a leader now in your capacity? What les lessons would you, would you give to the youths watching? Yes, as youth, uh, we need to keep on casting our nets uh, wider because you realize that... Uh, in the journey of leadership, in the journey of entrepreneurship, in the journey of wanting to achieve more, in the journey of wanting to be a better youth or a better person, there'll be so many failures than uh, so many successes. Mm -hmm. So as we keep on casting our nets wider, uh, you may fail up, uh, you may fail 99 times, but uh, that one success can open up so many opportunities that will transform your life and even so many people around you and it has happened to me so many times. So let's keep pushing, 
uh, let's keep believing in ourselves because uh, we are the people to transform our nation. We are the people to transform our continent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it is with us, uh, really, because um, just away from this, but almost related, we, we've seen what has been happening in Kenya, um, the revolution, Gen Z, and we're seeing the influence it has in even the other African countries, you know. So we can clearly see that um, the, there's a certain influence that we have, even as young people, and we can tap into that to make positive impact and change Africa, right, in our own capacity. So um, let me ask you that question again, which I had asked uh, John earlier. So what are some of the lessons you've picked that you'd want to share? Um, I think I speak for many as a woman. Uh, because, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll, I'll go back to what we do at Girls for Girls. So the whole idea behind Girls for Girls uh, was uh, realizing that so many, uh, so little women take up leadership positions. Uh, I mean, Hillary Clinton had to be pushed to uh, occupy <laughs> <laughs> that seat, you know. Um, and well, ha um, Girls for Girls was curated in Harvard, and these were women, you know, the top mm -hmm. leaders. And they're seeing this gap in their different continents and countries, and they were like, how can we bridge that gap? And I feel it's, it still translates to every other woman um, outside there. Um, and one of the biggest mantra now that we have for G4G is do it afraid. Mm. We say do it afraid to every young girl, do it afraid to every um, young woman and even older elderly woman uh, that you deserve to be in the space that you're in. Mm. Uh, it takes twice or thrice for a woman uh, what um, as, a, as, as a compared to a man, right? Mm -hmm. So, and the one of the challenges that we realize is we have a, a, a lot of internal conflicts before we decide to do something. Research shows that a woman will make sure they're either 95 to 100 percent. That's very true. Ticking, you know, in a <laughs> job description, like I need to tick 95 to 100 mm percent -hmm. before I apply for a job. As opposed to a girl would be like, ah, Imoja, let me give it a shot, you know? <laughs> And for us, we really reiterate, uh, uh, do it afraid. And that's what I would say uh, has been a key lesson for me. Um, it's believing in the beauty of my dreams and not stopping at that, but just pushing. Like, what would happen if I, you know? Mm -hmm. I will not lock myself out of, I've never been in that, so I will not do that. Um, and that ties to stay curious. I wonder what would happen if uh -huh. I said hi. Yeah. I wonder what would happen <laughs> if I did this. You know, um, I wonder what would happen if um, I talked more of his ideas and see how I can translate it into something I'm doing, right? Okay. So uh, for me, I w it will be do it afraid. Don't stop believing. Keep dreaming. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much beauty. Um, and I feel we are very blessed to, um, to be in the it's uh, the information era, right? The knowledge era. Mm -hmm. So we have so much that's accessible um, quite easily, uh, but you will still find women uh, locking themselves out. I'm very passionate about women and young girls. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, I, I would say to every other youth, and particularly to the young girl and to the um, woman outside there, do it afraid. Uh, don't cancel yourself. Let mm. someone else do that, but don't be the person that cancels you. Um, and I think th that then creates the positivity mindset and abundance mindset, away from the scarcity mindset. And so then you're able to find yourself with more opportunities and people trust you more, people refer you more, but it has to start with you are enough, you can do this, and actually following through. Wow. So yeah. Okay, I, I love it. Uh, do it afraid and stay curious. Yeah. So that will actually help. If you're a woman, I hope you've had that it's very profound. To you, John, how can people, um, what opportunities uh, does Yali offer and how can people be part of it? Yes, so Yali offers uh, so many opportunities, starting from uh, what I mentioned earlier. We have the Yali Network, which is free. Every young person can just Google Yali Network. Then uh, once you sign up, there are so many courses uh, from, from entrepreneurship 
from mm -hmm. civic leadership, from public management, that you can do to build your capacity. Then uh, from the YALI network, there's the YALI uh, regional leadership centers all across Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, the cohorts are normally opened on, on a seasonal basis. So cohort 59 just closed. So keep on watching for the next cohorts because uh, in joining the YALI RLC, it is now a physical training at the Chandaria Innovation Center in Kenyatta University where you are immersed in an intensive training for about six weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, for four weeks, sorry. Uh, so uh, beyond the Yali RLC, we also have the Mandela Washington Fellowship, which mm -hmm. also builds your capacity with other young leaders now all over Africa. Now, as alumni of these programs, you are also exposed to so many other opportunities. For instance, Yali RLC offers the Alumni Transformation Fund, which uh, I'm also a beneficiary because. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, funded by USAID and it is sponsoring one of my projects called the Sea Youth Empowerment Project. Mm -hmm. Also, as a Mandela Washington Fellow, there are still so many other opportunities. There are catalytic funds, there are reciprocal exchanges where now you, other leaders uh, in the US come uh, to work within your organization or you go back there for your professional development. And there are also other funds that uh, are brought to our disposal as uh, Mandela Washington Fellows that can be important for our youth in starting their businesses, in expanding their organizations and so forth. And also lastly, as an alumni, the center does not just leave you post the training. For instance, in, in my organization at the moment, I'm receiving quite a lot of uh, capacity building from yearly RLC in terms of uh, developing policies for my organization Mm -hmm. and also building the capacity of my team so that uh, by the time I'm done with the, with the alumni uh, transformation fund, I am positioned to now even receive funds of a higher magnitude mm -hmm. so that I not only uh, uh, influence change within Sierra County, but yeah. even in Kenya or even in, in, in Eastern Africa. Mm -hmm. And now that is the essence of creating more YALIs within our community. Oh. If I'm a product of YALI, if I'm I can also create another yali in my community mm -hmm. and also other people. You can imagine in 10 years how many young people are going to be transformed by that. Wow. Yeah. Wow, it goes down. Yes. It trickles Trickle down. Yeah. True. I, I love it. Yeah. So um, I understand that Yali has a festival coming up. Yeah. Yeah, tell us about it, Matthew. Um, a quick one. Uh, <coughs> just mm -hmm. to also add on, on what um, uh, he'd spoken about. Uh, so yes, Yali does not uh, leave you as is post the training. There are so many opportunities mm -hmm. um, and areas of development, continuous leadership development. Uh, so they uh, offer courses as away from the Yali network courses. Uh, we get, uh, let me say it in a youthful way. So um, <laughs> let's say, uh, Within us, we have other leadership development uh, programs. Uh, so you will get discounts if they are payable. Like okay. there, there, there are benefits of being a yearly alumni as mm -hmm. opposed to coming in as a youth, mm -hmm. uh, general youth. Um, but more to that, I would say even as a yearly alumni, internally there are uh, positions uh, that will enable you to continue building your capacity as a leader. I say that because I also serve uh, in the participant engagement committee um, and he'd mentioned that uh, cohort 59 applications have just closed. Yeah. Uh, so I do know uh, the cohort 55 alumni are eagerly waiting for their welcoming party. So I get uh, to coordinate um, and just bring them on board, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so we look forward to more and more applications. It just doesn't end at what you do outside Yali. You also get to, again, develop within Yali. Mm -hmm. as, as a network. Um, and during yeah. this program, the physical program, um, like for cohort 59, is it, um, uh, do the participants um, um, stay there or is it going and coming back? How is it? Fully residential. Fully residential? Yes. Right. Uh, so they have designated residential areas and at, at a residential uh, designated residential area within Kenyatta University premises um, and networking starts from where you stay because then they also get to link you up with uh, 
a participant from another country. Mm -hmm. So then again, post coursework, uh, okay. then when you also get to get to your rooms, you still get to share experiences, you know, yeah. um, and discuss any other uh, innovative ideas that you might have. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. And just to also add on that, uh, when the applications open, we usually also have um, information sessions. So then again, we do uh, we do flyers for the different counties. So you can be on the lookout on the yearly uh, pages on social media, and join any information session because then we are able to take you through the application process, what to expect, you know, and answer any other questions that will come up. All right. Yeah. Great. What about the festival? Oh yes. Uh, so we do have the yearly festival that's coming up. We have had. Yali Fest uh, Kisumu, Yali Fest Mombasa. So on the eight, uh, 17th of August, we'll be having Yali Fest Nairobi. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so it, it's going to be bringing uh, young change makers just to celebrate impact and creativity. Uh, so the Yali Fest will be having uh, panelist sessions will be having, workshops will be having, exhibitions, um, and cultural performances, um, all in all just to provide a platform for collaboration, inspiration, and learning. Right. Yeah. You said August 17th, 17th yes. in Nairobi. In Nairobi, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's open to um, the Yali alumni from uh, all the three pillars. So we'll be having the alumni, we'll be having the different stakeholders and also the partners on board. Okay. And it's going to be very, very Mind. exciting. <laughs> very <laughs> exciting. Clearly. Yeah. And is it open to um, uh, the public, someone who's not an alumni? Uh, at the moment, yes. we, will be exp uh, we will be opening to the external? Yes, yes. Uh, like at mm -hmm. uh, Yali Kisumu, we had... Uh, a number of non alumni, as long as you register on time as a delegate, oh, okay. then uh, you are able to attend. And the uh, registration is through yalifest stroke mwf uh, dot org. Yeah, okay. yeah. yalifest yali stroke mwf kenya dot mm. org. Yeah. Right. Yes. I, and it's free. Yeah, yeah, and it's free. All YALI programs are free, even the RLC, the Network Manila Washington Fellowship. Mm -hmm. They are all sponsored by the U.S. government as their mm -hmm. initiative to develop the next generation of African leaders. So they're all free. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what, what, um, what should they expect, um, the, the people that are coming, the alumni, the delegates, mm. and yeah, what is there to expect? Yes, so at a YALI Fest, you find uh, so much innovations uh, being showcased. And uh, as, a, as an aspiring change maker, then you get to learn from these guys already doing what, uh, uh, what maybe you dream of doing. Mm -hmm. And of course, networking with uh, all these Yali and Mandela Washington fellows within Kenya. I think it is important to develop such kind of a network as a young fellow. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's amazing. We've gotten all the information about <laughs> the festival. Yeah. Uh, so as we come to a close on this, um, maybe you can you can give your own word um, on to to a youth watching. You know, you guys are small. You have achieved so much uh, at a young age, and you're still doing. You're still there. You know, still pursuing still going out there, still inspiring. So how do you get to, the, to do this, um, despite the pressures, you know, around? And um, some, for someone who's discouraged and they're looking for jobs and they're not getting anything and they're frustrated, and, uh, you know, because that's the state, the economic state of the country, uh, it's bad. So what would you tell a young person out there? Let me start with uh, Mercy and then finish with John. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, reflecting on what you've just said, it takes me to one of um, the modules that we get to go through with Girls for Girls, um, and it's Courageous Leadership. And one of the things that we talk about is investing in our gathering years. So then these are the years, uh, the cold nights, no friends, you know, mm -hmm. uh, multiple rejections, um, and it's seasons. It's not just 
when you're a youth, but I believe it happens throughout life mm -hmm. in the specific uh, seasons. So what we usually talk about is investing in our gathering years, and this would also involve uh, inve uh, building or finding your village. So when I say village, uh, these are your supporters. Uh, it, it, it gets very discouraging. It can get very lonely. It's a very, what, what, do, I, what, do, I, what do I call it? It, it? it can feel like a very huge task, like a huge mountain, and it can bring a lot of self-doubt. Uh, but then who's in your corner? That's what we call uh, the village in G4G. So these are the people that will be able to hold your hand and to guide you. And this brings about uh, the aspect of mentorship, which we're also very big on. Um, who then do you have in your corner that's able to hold your hand and support you uh, through your professional and your personal growth? Uh, so uh, it's not an easy journey. It's not an easy path, I would say. But uh, again, one of the mantras that I live by is nobody will believe in me unless I believe in myself. Like it has to start with me. So if I believe um, I am, you know, you're, you're destined for greatness um, and there's so many good things out there for you, then it gives you a, a, a light bulb, a light within you that pushes you day to day. Uh, but then it also helps to have a village that encourages you. It can be as simple as your mom. Your mom giving you that call in the morning will push you throughout the day. It can be as simple as having a best friend or that work colleague who just brightens up your morning. So again, it's also very, it matters who's around you mm -hmm. and so they're able to to push you it's not easy uh, but then the thing is we will still keep pushing so it helps who works with us in that journey okay, wonderful. Yeah. building fi building and finding your own uh, yes and believing in yourself for sure wonderful what if someone wants how how can someone get to be mentored by girls Girls for, for Girls. girls yeah. uh, so find us on um, Instagram, on LinkedIn, and on Facebook at Girls for Girls Kenya. Be specific on Kenya. Yeah. Others <laughs> will be thrown to, but they'll still refer you to Kenya. Uh, so on our social media handles, you will find, uh, or even the Girls for Girls uh, project, Girls for Girls website, whereby they will take you to the different countries. You will explore your interest in joining Girls for Girls Kenya. We will receive your request and I'll be able, uh, me and my team will be able to reach out to you. You can join in as a mentee and you can also join in as a mentor. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, they'll definitely follow there. Uh, to also you, follow us, yes, <laughs> on social media. Okay. Yes, so as, as, as I conclude, um, mm. I think uh, it is true that most of our young people are very frustrated because of uh, limited opportunities and so forth. But uh, I'd want to urge our young people to, that uh, let us continue building our capacity. Let us continue building our value. There are two sides of the coin to this. We can either continue looking for opportunities or we can make ourselves very valuable that the opportunities come to us. So let us make ourselves so valuable that the opportunities come to us rather than keeping looking for opportunities which may be non-existent. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, also inspired by uh, Fred Swanika, the founder of the African Leadership University. He mm -hmm. keeps on saying that uh, we learn and love to do the hard things. Nothing good uh, comes easy, so as young people, let us continue pursuing the things that we believe in uh, very aggressively, however difficult the journey may be. Because uh, you know, when you want to see a very uh, beautiful view of the landscape, you can't see it when you are not on the top of the mountain. So you must embrace the journey of climbing uh, to the top of the mountain so you can enjoy the view that uh, comes with it. Then lastly, as young people, uh, even currently in our nation, uh, we are holding um, our country like this. Uh, so let us also think uh, of, of uh, our actions. Mm -hmm. When uh, are we, the things that we do as on an individual basis, are they building a country or are they destroying a country? Because at the end of the day, we still want to build businesses in this country, we still want to live in this country. 
So let us pursue the things that uh, will enable us build our country and uh, ensure that uh, we continue to create a beautiful Kenya for all of us to live in. Thank you. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. And how can someone be part of Olan? Yes, so Olan, uh, our website is olan.co.ke. You can also find us on uh, Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter and Instagram mm -hmm. as Olan. Olan. Yes, thank you. And Olan is O L E A R N. O, o apostrophe uh -huh. L E A R N. Okay. Yes, olan.co.ke. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you for for, me. for such amazing insights. You have spewed wisdom today. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and we appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having us as well. It's been an enjoyable moment and we look forward to more. All right. Yeah. We definitely look forward to more engagement with both of you. So we have been talking mostly around leadership and I hope you have uh, been inspired, take a, uh, taken away something, um, desire to be part of YALI and such programs, be part of Olin, be part of Girls for Girls because these are amazing programs that are doing that inspiring change and they're empowering us as young people. So that has been John Jairo. Uh, who is a civil engineer, social entrepreneur, and a Mandela Washington fellow, which is part of YALI's program, and Marcin Zissa, who is a development scientist, uh, pro project manager, uh, and a YALI RLC alumni. Um, we have been glad to have them. So now we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with another conversation. So stay with us. The hashtag to use is Why in the Morning.